had my first mental breakdown for this van build within the first 48 hours of having the van and not even starting the van build yet. So, <laughs> it just keeps burning out. Just pretend like I'm being dramatic, okay? Let me have my moment. <laughs> It worked. I get my dramatics from Taylor Swift. What can I say? <sighs> anyway, I got a story for you. Come on. Get in here. So, um, do you remember when I said this in my last video? I do like a mini pep talk before we walk in, you know? Like, especially as a female, before I go in there, I have to really feel confident that they're not going to pull one over on me. Yeah, um, that didn't age well ends up, I did get screwed over. I am genuinely embarrassed by what happened. And I decided in the end to make this video because I wanna help someone else. And at the end of the day, this is an authentic part of my story and my van build. And I'm not the first person to get tricked by a car dealership. I'm not that special and I'm not gonna be the last. <laughs> I went through a phase where I just felt like an idiot. At the end of the day, what happened was a dude took advantage of me so that he could make more money to buy his fourth sports car. That's what happened. And I fell for it. I fell for the trap that there was a way I could have found it if I would have been paying more attention. At this point, I literally barely care because I got most of it fixed. So basically, here's what happened. So when I went to sign up for auto pay for my loan, I discovered that the loan was pretty much the same price that I paid for the vehicle. And I was confused. I was like, you know, I put a pretty hefty down payment down. So it should have been $10,000 less than I agreed to pay for the vehicle, but it wasn't. So I immediately call the dealership and I say, hey, like this is, what is this price here like this for? And he said, oh, that's because the price you're seeing on the loan website includes the interest you're gonna be paying over that 75 month period. And I was like, Sir, I've paid numerous loans in my life. I've had a college loan, another car loan. That's not how loans work. And he was like, it is, I assure you. So I said, I'll call you right back. And I called the loan company and sure enough, that was a lie and not true. So let's go back to the beginning. How did we even get here in the first place? I bought this van four days ago. He wrote everything up for me, covered warranties, covered registration, titles, fees, etc. He gave me what he said was the final cost of the vehicle. Wrote it on this paper, which I happened to take a photo of, which I wasn't supposed to, but by pure luck I did. He asked me to sign it and said, if I go back to the finance guy and I get him to agree to this, this is you saying that yes, you will go through with the deal. Then I look at the paper and I pretty much, it's a little above budget and I figure, you know, why not try a little more, try a little harder. I'll always wonder if I don't. So I just was like, throughout the first thing I could think of, I was like, all right, I want the warranty for free. I want that price, like I want whatever that costs, I don't wanna pay for that. And he was like, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. And I was like, all right. And I got up and I left the dealership, um, hoping he'd call back and say, yeah. And little, you know, not shockingly, he called back within like 10, 15 minutes, um, twice actually, and gave me a better deal and said he would take 70% off of the price of the warranty. I was like, all right. I probably would have bought it anyway, so sold. So now I go back to the dealership and you know I come in and I'm like, hey, that's gonna work for me, that's 70% off of the warranty, I'll take it. Um, pulls out the piece of paper, we shake hands, I sign it. Um, he did not change the number on the sheet, um, but we had discussed it, I wasn't worried about it. Um, maybe I should have been. Um, he goes back, comes back with the official paperwork. I look over all of it, it says $43,000 when I thought I had agreed to 45. So basically in my mind, I'm like, all right, I saved a good chunk of money with this warranty thing. I had agreed to doing a $10,000 deposit. So with all these numbers, when I opened my bank to look at my loan, my number should have been about 32,000-ish, if I'm correct. Um, well, when I opened the loan, it was, it was at like 43, 45,000. It was whatever like the original number that I signed for was. I, where's my deposit? Like where, why does this not, this number didn't budge? Uh, math isn't mathing. So I immediately call him up and that's when he gives me the whole financing lie. When I re-looked through the paperwork and was really, you know, I knew what I was looking for this time, looking for the deposit, looking for the numbers that didn't add up, I found it. it. You know, at the end of the day, I signed that paper. The way it was written, 
I mean, it was abs he absolutely was trying to pull one over on me and it worked. The big number at the bottom says 43,000. That's what I thought I was signing for. But end of the day, legally, it is on me. Morally, it is absolutely on him. So now I'm super above budget. And I tried researching about returning a vehicle because I didn't want to go this above budget. Um, and in P Pennsylvania, you can return a vehicle within three days. In New Jersey, you cannot. So basically what you have to do is call them and they have to agree to take the vehicle back, which of course they didn't. Call him back, I talked to him and I'm like, dude, you knew I didn't want to go over 50K. You pulled up a 50K vehicle and I literally like choked. And you know, I'm literally, like I'm basically homeless. I live in my car. Why would you pull this on me? I don't understand. Like, how can you do that to another person? For congratulations, you want four sports cars? Like have at it. I literally do not understand how he sleeps at night. You know, essentially like $52,000 was not in my budget. That leaves me like what, like three, $4,000 for my build with my budget of trying not to spend more than I got was paid for my vehicle that I just sold. They won't take it back. They really don't give a single shit. Um, I message him and now all of a sudden he's not responding. When I finally get him on the phone again, he tells me that what they can do is they can remove the warranties. So I look more into the warranties, I Google them and guess what? The warranties are void if you turn the vehicle into an RV. So just more, it was a waste of money anyway. So I decided to cancel the warranties, which sounds really crazy. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that in the comments, but but the vehicle's a 2021 and it still has over a year of a warranty left on it. So I'll know if the vehicle has problems before that original warranty wears off. So then removing the warranties and all these extra add-ons gets me down to 47,000, which is 2,000 above what I agreed to sign to, which I'm not thrilled about, but I feel a lot better about losing $2,000 than $7,000. So I'll take what I can get, especially when essentially the warranty wasn't going to work for me anyway. So my next step was calling my uncle who's a lawyer and he talked me through some options about returning the vehicle if I could do that. At the end of the day though, I've decided to keep the vehicle because the vehicle itself isn't the problem. I love this van, I think it's great. The work it would take is just not worth the money. And I felt really bad about my mistake, honestly, like so bad and so dumb and I'm just ready to kind of like move on. I'm so excited to build and I learned my lesson. What else is there to say, you know? I'm sure the comment section will find way more things to say, but <laughs> I'm so scared for the comment section. Please be nice to me. I know I'm dumb. Um, <laughs> I'm punished enough that $2,000 was the money that I saved from selling my Eras tour ticket to go see Taylor Swift when I decided that that $2,000 was not in my budget. So, all right, so real quick, let's review what did we learn. One, check your paperwork 10 million times. Check where your deposit's at. Two, make sure your warranty does not go void if you turn it into a camper van. Three, if I could go back, I would actually choose to purchase a vehicle in Pennsylvania and not New Jersey, knowing the law about not being able to return a vehicle um, at all in New Jersey and then having three days in Pennsylvania. So lesson number four is to check Google reviews because I Googled it afterwards when I went to, went to write my scathing review and discovered that their rating is two out of five on Yelp. And it's because there are countless people who went through the exact same thing I went through. And so in a way I was like, I felt dumb because that information was a Google search away. Um, but it's, at the same time, I was like, so this is not me. They do this for a living. You professionally every single day go and try to trick people into losing thousands of dollars. Um, and that's just, that's disgusting, honestly. So overall, I've decided to keep the van. I love it, I'm very happy with it. And it could have been a lot worse. I could have totaled the van on the way home. I could have bought the van from, Face from the woman I was looking at buying it from, from Facebook Marketplace. And she could have completely scammed me, then left and given me no contact information, just like went AWOL. So I, it could have been worse. I, I can lose the $2,000 and take the lesson and learn. I literally have no other option. That's, that's all I've got. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> but with that said, with no further ado, may I introduce you to my new home, Abraxas, which I named after my favorite fantasy book series. There is a wyvern that basically was meant to be a bait wyvern for the bigger wyverns, which a wyvern's like a dragon. And it ended up being the fiercest of them all, but it still loves to stop and smell the roses and just have fun. And it's still really powerful and I really like that and I feel like that's what I'm trying to learn with this build which is part of why this mistake really hurt me was that I I wanted to take this as an opportunity to become strong again I didn't want to like, I feel like sometimes I'm a pushover and I didn't I don't want to be that kind of person I want to be strong but I also want to still 
be compassionate and have empathy. And I feel like finding that balance is where I want to go. And this already at step one was really, really showing me how much I need to work on that. So yeah, Abraxos has been a fighter since day one. We haven't even started the van build yet. Um, and she's already fighting. She's already fighting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just super excited to get started. And tomorrow is day one of the van build. So I'll see you then.